All right, so we will now try to accomplish what we've got listed here regarding actual webmaster tools. We're going to start this together, and then after I show the main concepts in general, we'll probably do some one-on-one -on -one time for a bit. I build in some time on the second day of class to do this, because this is a very valuable thing to do as soon as possible we're going to actually jump to the Bing section. We're going to set up Bing first. We will set up the Google stuff, of course. But let's set up Bing first. And once we're able to set one of them up, we'll be able to set up the other one easily. But we're going to set up Bing. Go ahead and click the first link, the Webmaster Guidelines link. That should open in your web browser. If it asks you, just say, Allow. Let me open that link. I should go to bing.com specifically to the Webmaster Tools Help and How to Center. And so it's going to tell you what's so great about this. Um, it's going to give you data. We're going to see these charts. Where's our traffic coming from? What's effective? What's not? The big idea about all of this data that we'll get from Bing or Google is to help us make decisions. What's working? What's not? what was popular, what wasn't. But this screen is basically the manual, the Bing manual, everything about how Bing webmaster tools work. Frequently asked questions, advanced topics, dealing with malware and spam infecting your site, configuring the site and all of that. So we're not going to look at it all together. You, you, I would recommend you, you know, you uh, bring it up on your phone, curl up by the fireplace with a nice glass of wine, and then read it in detail so you can understand all of these aspects of it. What we're going to do is, I'm going to close that. Uh, I'm uh, going to go back to the PDF, and this is the link right here, bing.com slash toolbox. If we follow that link, or if we type that address, bing.com slash toolbox, it actually goes to bing.com slash toolbox slash webmaster, but bing.com slash toolbox. So we're going to set this up. How many of you currently have a Hotmail email address? Outlook, Outlook would qualify as well. Outlook.com, Hotmail.com, any Microsoft account. Uh, if you have one of those, we'll be able to set this up a little faster because Bing is a Microsoft product, Hotmail is a Microsoft product, Outlook, Xbox, all of these. Windows, they're all a Microsoft product. So if you've got a Microsoft account, we'll be able to set this up faster. When we get over to Google Webmaster, it'll be the opposite. If you've got a Gmail, we'll be able to set up that faster. Question? Um, if you have a Hotmail, but you don't use it frequently, is there a way to change it over later? So you want to use that to the access the account, but account. change it later? Yes, I believe so. Not exactly sure, but I believe so. And if you're not sure, we can create a brand new account, a brand new Hotmail, and just use it for this. No, actually, they're separate. But the good news is we can use a Yahoo Mail account. If you don't have Hotmail, we can use any email account. I'm just saying the fastest will be a Microsoft account. So you can still use your Gmail or Hotmail or whatever, or uh, Yahoo. So notice from this screen here, we've got sign in or sign up. And if you set this up, you'll get free $100 credit for using Bing. Remember, last week I said the easy way to get traffic to your site, to get good SEO, is to pay for it. Bing is going to give you $100 for free for you to make those ads, to start to get traffic, to start to build from zero setting this up. So either sign in if you've got a Microsoft account, Hotmail, Outlook, etc. Or click sign up if you don't have one and you'll be able to keep your current Yahoo address or Gmail or Cox or whatever you have. So if you're going to create an account, uh, I'm not going to go through the whole process here, this will take a while, but either you're going to sign in or you're going to create an account, and notice you can use an existing email address or get a brand new Hotmail. <clears throat> you select get a new email, you can go with Outlook or Hotmail. So let's take a moment, either log in, 
or sign up and then on the next screen I'll show you what we need to do. Yes. I signed in starting, but it tells me I already have a Microsoft account. I go back to Res and sign in with that. And it should work. Yes. Okay. Try to sign in with your existing account. Yes. Didn't know I had. Say, um, you know, I like I like Bing, and I come up really strong in Bing. But I find that the better I do on Bing, the worse I do on Google. That's very odd. That shouldn't really happen. Um, Maybe as we keep talking about these concepts, we'll see some things that maybe answer that issue, but it's not that common that I, that I hear that. How did you get to that site? Bing.com slash toolbox. That's all I'll try to take a moment. If you need any help, let's, have, let's try to log in to see if we see some kind of screen like this. This is going to vary with people, and that's OK. Uh, let's see how we can do it. I'm trying to get out. I can't get it. It's not I was trying to get it out. It's not giving me any options. What's that? Okay, thank you. Um, I, I signed in here and then I got to this point, so I'm already there, but I went back and I used my password and it didn't work. I'll just get that started over here. So. Well, if you start over, you, you that means you're going to create a brand new account. Is that okay? Yeah, that's I'm going to have to do that because um, when I went back here, it's something over here. I entered here. Well, it seems to be saying your password is incorrect. You're sure that that's how your password for rules? I'm not certain, of course. I tried to get the Google alternative and I did. Well, what we could also do is click to reset your password if that's okay. That would, that's fine. We would require that we, we click on right here, can't access your account. And then it's saying your password. Are you able to access your Cox email from here, or do you have to access that email? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, this might not be the best way then. Uh, uh, I just figured to start correct with a new name. Sure. <laughs> yeah, it looks like I need to just create a new one because I don't want to have to. Okay. Before we do anything here, click on Get New Email Address. So now fill out the rest, and then you can create a new account. Same. So re enter your email address here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if it's Cox. Sometimes it does. I think uh, it's because we got two keyboards.
Oh, I know. I don't. I always use that right now. So you can do that. Yeah. Too many. I know. Yeah. Even that. Like that's every year. Like I put it in my plan. The big thing is that All right, is anyone having any trouble? You just want to either create the account or sign in. You don't spend a lot of time. You do need to show how this works, so make sure you're able to log in. Okay. And remember, I'm in. <laughs> remember, I'm uh, recording this, so if you're not quite getting it at the moment, you can go ahead and watch the recorder. Any final problems before I move on? Um, as long as you see that screen, you'll be fine. I'm going to show that screen just a minute. Oh, oh wow, you can't unknown your website. Okay, if you're not quite logged in, I'm going to move on, but uh, that's okay. You'll catch up in just a moment. The whole concept here is we get this free account from Bing where we then we can track multiple websites. We can track a bunch of data. I've got this test account with nothing filled in here yet. You might have a screen that looks something like this or a slightly different screen. Uh, if you see the different screen, just wait a moment. But if you see a screen that looks like this with no websites, click on Add your site. There's one at the top and one at the bottom here. They're both the same. They're both the same. So if I click Add your site, it's then going to say, What's the address for your website? So here you'll need to type in your website address. If you know, if you have any experience with webmaster tools of Google, in Google, um, you need to add the HTTP version and the HTTPS version, um, the secure version and the non-secure version. In Bing, um, we have to deal with that in a little while. So if you don't know what that means, just don't worry. Let's put in the address of your website here, and then it's going to ask for a sitemap. At this screen it's optional. Notice the URL is the required one. The sitemap is optional. I don't know what a sitemap is. This little info box. There are going to be these info boxes throughout that kind of explain what's going on. But this one is a sitemap that basically is a listing of all of your webs all of your pages on your website. Again, I wouldn't create this manually. I would use a plugin. I don't have my sitemap handy at the moment, so I'll get back to it. I can add a sitemap later, and I'll talk more in detail about it a little later, so I won't change that. I won't add anything. Then it's got, when do you receive the most traffic to the site in your local time? Bing and Google are going to be checking your website once in a while. They're going to be sending their spiders to crawl your website to see is anything new, what's been updated, what's broken. So you're going to get traffic coming from the search engines themselves to check up on your site. Um, that could impact the speed of your, of your website, of your traffic. So other people might then find your site slow because the search engines are browsing your site. So if we know that at a certain time of the day we get the most traffic, we can say, Bing and Google, don't visit my site as much during these times. I don't know at the moment what time of day 
I get the most traffic, so I'm not going to select anything. But after I collect data and it tells me I'm getting most of my traffic 5 p.m. to 11 p.m., I might come back, and I'll show the setting later, you might come back and say, okay, Bing, don't come to my site during these times. I get more traffic there. Don't slow me down. So I don't know just yet. I'll leave it on all day. I get traffic all day. So the only thing I added here was my website. And yes, there does exist the .cool domain at the moment. We have .com, .net, .biz. We have a bunch of brand new .somethings. One of them is .cool. But no, I don't own that site. But there is a .cool. I'm going to add the site. I haven't even got to where you are yet. Again, if you're not quite where I got, that's okay. That's why I'm doing the videos. But let me see what that issue is. Oh, okay. Some of you, I apologize, some of you are going to see a longer stream of information that asks you to fill it in because you have a new account. I forgot. I have, a, I have an account that I've already used, so it's a little bit more detailed. So what you'll need to do is fill in that that screen that's a little more detail. I can't show it, unfortunately. But just fill it in as best as possible. Let's take a quick moment to do that. And then we'll proceed when we see this kind of screen. So let's wait. I'll wait for a moment for you. Would you recommend that we get the alert preferences? Because you have to there is a button there about alert preferences, and I would say leave those on because I want to get emails when my site is down. I want to get emails when I've got sp uh, spam on my site. So you can turn it off, but I'm not worried about them having my email because it is a big, important, famous company with valuable data of my site. So it's more about uh, getting these alerts to be up to date on your site. People often then get confused with one of the boxes that says company size. So whatever you want there. I just put one more. So if I got something and I got the website, I got in there. Uh, so if they were on the screen, they just say you're going to need to close that. I couldn't show it. Oh, you couldn't. Oh, okay. That could be the problem. I'm sorry. Sign it one more time. Oh, crap. I'm not going to be able to proceed, and it will be difficult to answer your question at yeah, this moment. Okay. So let's just follow along. Are you there? Moment, and uh, you'll be able to do it. Oh, you did. We're, we're, we're going to go on for the moment, but we will figure it out in just a minute. 
All right, everyone, let me move on. Let me say a few more things, and then we'll, we'll proceed. So we're going to need to do something similar on Google in a little while. But if you got to this screen, let me explain what this is about. A moment ago, I said, my website is victorcampos.cool. So now Bing wants to verify. OK, prove that that's your website. Because what if I put here, I'm going to set up Bing with competitor.com. You know, what's to stop me from setting up these webmaster tools with my competitor's website to see all their traffic and steal their traffic? This is to stop me, to verify. And there are three ways to do it. When we get over to Google, there'll be something very similar. I'm going to say here, don't bother with option three. These are either or, either one, two, or three. Don't bother with three. Three, even for me, is complicated. I don't bother with that. We're going to do either one or two. Let me tell you in general what it's asking of us, and then again, we'll do some one-on-one, -on -one because people always need the one-on-one. -on -one. I'm happy to do it. Number one is either download this file and then upload it to your site, usually through FTP or a file manager. If you don't know what that means, again, I'll help you one-on-one. -on -one. That's one possible way. You download the file, you upload it to your server, and then I come back to Bing and I click Verify. Bing will then go to your website, look for that file, and if it finds it, you're verified. Because you are not able to upload a, web, uh, a file to anyone else's website. You don't have their password. That's one way to verify. The other way, either or, so the other way is I log into my website like I'm going to edit it, like WordPress, let's say. And I go to my website and I copy this one line of code and I paste it into my website, usually in the HTML, in the head section of my code. I come back, I save my file, I come back to Bing, and I click Verify. Bing will go to your website, look for that code in your site, and if it's there, it verifies you. Again, don't bother with number three. When I come back here and I try to verify, I'll either, I either get a green check mark that it worked, or a big red X that it didn't. So what we're going to do is, I can lead us up to this point. I'm going to pause the recorder here, and now we'll do some one-on-one -on -one help. You want to raise your hand, and I'll be with you in order to try to get this part done. If you can't get this part done, right now, again, I'm recording this. You can try it at home. 